Hi, good afternoon, saints. And here I have another book review slash book recommendation. And if you have not checked out my playlist titled Book Recommendations, I suggest you look that up where I give book reviews, but I also, those book reviews that I give, I also recommend them for every believer to have in their uh, home library. And uh, they're all books to help you grow as a believer, and books such as references and things like that, commentaries, maybe concordances, and other books, just various uh, works to help you as a believer grow in the Lord. And here before me have this one, as you can see, it's titled Miller's Church History. It was written by Andrew Miller. Now, Andrew Miller was part of the what we would call the Plymouth Brethren Movement. Um, it's not known. It was called the Plymouth Brethren in eight in the 19th century England as the group, the movement that was started by such leaders as uh, uh, John John Nelson Darby. I believe it was uh, Andrew Norris, Anthony Norris Grove or something like that. And a couple others. Well, he was, if you don't know what that is, the movement, it's not a denomination, but it's a movement that still exists even today. And uh, Andrew Miller was a, a, a Plymouth Brethren. It's called Plymouth Brethren because it was the movement started in Plymouth, England. But most brethren don't like being called the Plymouth Brethren. They prefer just the Pl uh, Brethren. So we would call it the Brethren Movement. And he lived, I think, in the 1800s. So it's an old work that was written in the 19th century. But nevertheless, it's a very good book. And it was, it's been published by the uh, PBT, which is the Bible Truth Publishers, which is a Brethren um, publishing company. And they publish a lot of uh, stuff by John Nelson Darby, C.H. McIntosh, great stuff, uh, William Kelly, um, and a number of other Brethren writers that... I haven't even heard of, but um, I've heard of John Nelson Darby, and I have some works by C. H. McIntosh, great, great, uh, great author on uh, Christian literature. But I'm gonna read this, the back of this book. It says Miller's traces the development of the seven churches of Revelation two to three across the millennia. In each century, you will discover how God faithfully preserved His people and corrected them too. God's grace working in Luther, Pharrell, Wycliffe, and hundreds more, more lifts the heart in trouble. These portraits of God's people do not do nothing to paint over the warts. You will find a faithful, not fanciful view of the Lord's servants. Jerome went to the stake as to a joyful festival, and when the ex executioner would have kindled the bundles behind his back, he exclaimed, Place the fire before me. If I had dreaded it, I would have escaped it. Such tremendous faith humbles as much as the rage and repentance of Theodosius will remind you of our weakness and God's restoring grace. So as you can see, it's it's a pretty chunky book. And it's not very big, it's kind of small. And it's a good church history book. I have not read the whole thing, but I have uh, uh, just haven't had the time. But I've been looking through it, and it's really good. I've read already a couple um, segments, and it's it's really good. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, church history books written out there by great authors. There's a lot of works out there on, on ecclesiastical history. And one famous one is, you've probably heard of it, Philip Schaff's uh, The History of the Christian Church. But... The thing with that one is that it's an eight volume work and eight volumes in your library, especially if you have a home library, it's going to take up some space. And this one is pretty much condensed. So it's not it's not overly detailed, I would say, but it gives you still enough meat 
and it gives you they're pretty much brief descriptions but even in those brief descriptions you still get enough out of it so it doesn't leave you pretty much empty per se so you get still a good amount of of information of of the church history and his church uh that he, he traces it back to the early church I think the New Testament times of the book of Acts all the way up to, I think, the 18th century, um, from what I remember. I could be wrong, but we'll see right now. But uh, it's a very good book, and I only I got it for fifteen ninety nine, not in the Bi- Bible Truth Publishers, not this uh, publishing, although I could have gotten it there. I got it at inscripturetruth.com. It was much cheaper. Uh, Bible Truth Publisher sells it for twenty bucks, but I got it in ScriptureTruth.com for fifteen ninety nine, so I got it for four bucks less. So I saved four dollars, which is awesome. And I do recommend you checking out ScriptureTruth.com. They have great books there, um, Christian literature. They're very. They sell it at a very very ch- cheap and affordable price. They don't have a whole lot, but they do have. Their books are very uh, well priced and affordable. Most than most than uh, other Christian stores, but um, yeah, we'll get into this book, and this book, by the size of it, will easily fit into your library. It won't take up space, so it's just one one book, one volume, and I think I think every believer, in my opinion, should know church history. Every believer should know. They don't have to. I, I don't. You know, not every believer has to know every single detail. I mean, who has the time to go through every single detail of church history? But every believer should at least know some church history. I, I think it's important to see, you know, the church and believers back back, um, back then, how they lived and how they were faithful to the Lord and their setbacks and their frustrations or failures. And we see just how God moves, has been moving through His church the universal church the catholic church that is you know the universal church but this will be a very great uh, book for you and i definitely recommend it but we're gonna see i'm just gonna read the uh the table of contents so you so you get an idea what it's what you're getting in the book So as you can see, here's a title page, Miller's Church History by Andrew Miller. And it says, including the original last chapter written by Andrew Miller and put out by Bible Truth Publishers. This version was printed in USA 1999. It's a 1999 version. And it's it's the only version they have. That's the preface. So I'm going to read the contents. So introduction says, The Seven Churches of Asia... Chapter 1, the rock foundation, the foundation of the church, opening of the kingdom of heaven, church government. Chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, resurrection and ascension of Christ, descent of the Holy Ghost, calling in of the Gentiles. First Christian martyr, chapter 3, you have the disciples persecuted and scattered, Jerusalem and Samaria united by the gospel, conversion of Saul of Tarsus. Chapter 4, the first missionaries of the cross, the twelve apostles, Herodian line of kings. And the Apostle Paul, the first visit to Jerusalem, the first missionary journey, third visit to Jerusalem, visit to Athens, chapter 6, Paul's third missionary journey. And I'm not going to read, if you want, you can pause the video and you can look at the um, what's contained in each chapter. I'll just read uh, just briefly the chapter headings, that way you, you get an idea. Uh, chapter 7, it's the burning of Rome. Chapter 8, the internal history of the church. Chapter 9, from Commodus till the ascension of Constantine. Chapter 10, Constantine the Great. Chapter 11, the Council of Nicaea. Chapter 12, the internal history of the church. Chapter 13, the epistle to the church in Thyatira. Chapter 14, the spread of Christianity over Europe. You have chapter 15, Muhammad, the false prophet of Asia. Chapter 16, the silver line of sovereign grace. Chapter 17, the propagation of Christianity. Chapter 18, the church building spirit revived. 
chapter 19, the pontificate of Gregory the uh, the seventh, chapter 20, the crusades, chapter 21st, chapter 21, Henry the fifth and Gregory's successors, chapter 22, the encro- encroachments of Rome and England, and uh, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot. Of, uh, if you want, you can pause each one. So you can look at it on your own. So yeah, that's... That's a book. It's a 1200 about 1200 pages. It's a 1200 page book. Um and he even included as you saw in the beginning, it's a original including. So it includes one of the original last chapter written by Andrew Miller. In the last chapter uh I guess he traces the which is chapter 57. Philadelphia, Laodicea, Church Truth, the Spread of the Truth, Conclusion. But, um, yeah, that's, that's where you, he, he traces it back all the way to, uh, it looks like the, the Reformers. So that's where he traces it all the way back, as you can see the Puritans, John Wesley, you start to get to the Reformers, the uh, 1700s, that was John Wesley. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's a very good book. Uh, Andrew Miller gives good detail, even with brief, brief explanations. He still packs it with meat. So you're not getting, you're not getting, uh, it's not like you're not going to get any, anything out of it. You, you do get, you do pretty much get it packed with meat and he does give you good explanations. They are brief, but they're still packed with meat. And earlier I was reading, uh, which is interesting, the, uh, I was reading the origin of the, uh, er, origin of the clergy and lady. So, you know, the, that Christianity, where the origin of clergy and lady, lady started. And we know obviously it didn't start in, um, the scriptures. That's something that man eventually invented and brought into the Christian church. But I recommend you to have this book. And it's a good book to have um, if you don't have a whole lot of money. And you want to get a good book on church history. I definitely recommend you getting this one. It's by Andrew Miller. And it's titled Miller's Church History. You can get it in scripturetruth.com for fifteen ninety nine. Very, very cheap, and it will fit perfectly in your library without taking not taking any space, and uh, you will still have room. Because I know there's a lot of there's some works out there on church history that are very voluminous and they take up a lot of space in the library. And for me, I don't want a whole. I don't want. I I'm very limited as to my space in my library, so I don't want you know, a a work on church history that's going to take up, you know, a lot of space. That's maybe 10 or 8 volumes. And this is perfect because it's just, it's, it's, it's chunky, it's thick, but it's just one volume, one book, and it won't take up much space in your, in your library. And it's very good. You'll learn a lot. If you've never read anything on church history, I recommend you to pick it up. And you'll learn a lot about the Christian church. You'll learn about men of, of, of the faith in the past and how God moved among them. And uh, if you've read church history, you know, I still recommend you to get it. It's it still be a good addition to your library. And uh, I think this is my first work. I have a couple other books, just a couple other on church history. But this one is probably the first one that I have that's uh, that covers a long period from the New Testament all the way to the Protestant reformers. Or no, I have uh, the Pilgrim, the Pilgrim Church by E. H. Broadbent, which is another good work. 
But uh, yeah, this is the work. And uh, hopefully you like this book. It will be a great addition to your home library. And it would be a great reference. And it's not one of those books where you read it and you're done with it. But you can actually go back to it and check it out. Read again the church history. Learn about it. And uh, thank you for listening. So thank you and God bless.